So welcome to the village of Duxford. We're going to walk down to the river. But first, a note about parking. Please use the first lay-by opposite the, uh, the bungalow and not the second lay-by where the farmer actually needs access to his fields and also where he stores his um, farm machinery sometimes. So we're going to go down this bridle way, past these two cottages and down to the ford at Duxford. And so you get to the end of the bridle way and you come to the ford at the top end of our stretch of the river. Before we get to the ford, we're going to turn right and go up this uh, small footpath and that's going to take us along the riverbank that we have access to. So when you get to this sign, this is the start of our stretch. There are a couple of swims before you get to this sign that people do fish. In the summer, you'll find that there are lots of kids down at the ford paddling around, swimming around in the, uh, the river at the ford. But um, in winter, it's a much quieter stretch of river. But you get to this sign and you can then either choose to walk along the riverbank over the little footbridge and that will take you to a, a, a whole load of uh, swims and uh, riverbank or if you want to fast track your way down to the far end of the, the stretch you can actually walk up this footpath here and uh, walk along the edge of the farmer's fields and it just uh, as you'll see as we go along the uh, the riverbank it's a bit narrow in, in, in places so um, quite a lot of anglers who want to fish down the bottom end will just walk along the farmer's fields and you can get to those by going up this uh, little footpath there. So this stretch is uh, very much for the mobile angler. There's plenty of uh, trees you have to clamber over. There's some pretty slippery banks um, when it's wet and in winter. And there's some pretty high banks as well. So long handles to your landing nets are pretty essential on this stretch. But Duxford is a stretch that's uh, very good chub water. There are some uh, barbel in here. There are even some carp in here as well. And then the uh, usual species, roach, dace, even a few trout as well. Perch, pike. And uh, we're currently on like a, a loop off the main Thames that comes down past the ford and down to the uh, weir and lock. And then the river opens up to the uh, main river Thames as it is joined by the uh, lock cut. 
you will find along this stretch that there are quite long stretches where you just can't get to the river bank but persevere keep walking and you will come to more spaces that open up it's just some areas are just pretty impenetrable and the bailiffs just can't even get down to the river and if we can there's either steep banks that are unfishable or there's a lot of reeds in the water so you can't really get to the river to fish it properly again there's a stream dry stream in winter it fills up a little bit that you can step over and carry on down that footpath but again you can also walk up here and again join the farmer's field and walk along the farmer's field which like i said before is much easier if you uh, want to go down that far end but we're going to carry on down this footpath So you come out of the uh, more wooded area and into this last field and it's much more open as you can see and we've still got quite a long stretch of river to go yet you keep walking until you come to the metal footbridge on this bank So I think some of our members think that this bridge, this rainbow shaped bridge is the end of our stretch, but it isn't. That just takes you up to the lock and uh, away from our water. But we can carry on walking down here, fishing this bank. And you do get the benefit of uh, fishing the weir and the faster water that it produces, which is quite nice. So this is one of the more popular swims down here. Not surprisingly really, it's got a bit of everything. Okay, so looking back to where we've just walked from, we came in right in this corner next to this copse, sort of around here. And we've been able to fish all the way along here. And we're just coming up to the end of our stretch now. And this bridge is what marks the end of our stretch on the Alliance ticket.
And I would say, please don't fish any further than this because you will get caught. It's uh, the Duke of Plymouth's land and he has a gamekeeper that does patrol it. So speaking from past experience, personal experience, I would suggest you don't fish down there. So we're going to head back to the uh, lay-by, the car park now, but I'm going to show you the um, fast track walk along the fields, the farmer's fields, which is always a much quicker route back to the car at the end of a hard day's fishing. So we've walked back from the, uh, the end point of our stretch, come to the end of that big open field and we're just coming back into the more wooded area. But what we're going to do is rather than walk along the river bank like we did on the way here, we're going to take a left turn and walk up a small slope and into the farmer's field. And as long as we stick to the edge of the field, the farmer has no problem with us using it as a footpath. So you might recognise those posts from earlier on in the video. That there's the path along the river and we're going to go up here. And into this farmer's field. I'm going to walk along the edge of the field along the hedge and then we'll find the opening that takes us through to the next farmer's field. So we just follow the hedge row along and uh, we're going to go into the corner and down this little footpath. Over a little bridge and you can go join the river down there and if you remember from earlier on in the video, that's the little area where there's a, a ditch that sometimes fills with water in winter and sometimes it's dry, you can step over it and carry on fishing on that riverbank. But like I say, we're on the shortcut on the way back to the car park now. So we're gonna carry on walking along the farmer's fields because it's much quicker and less precarious. Okay, so we've come to the end of that next field and we're gonna cut through this hedge Again, go over a little bridge and that's going to let us go into another farmer's field. We're getting there. So we're at the end of that third field or of course the first field if you're just arriving and wanting to walk down to the far end. This is a little bit more tricky because there isn't a uh, proper bridge here. You've got to kind of duck over, or duck under, sorry, a tree and step over a ditch, which isn't easy when you've got fishing tackle and it's dark. So just be warned. That you'll recognise from earlier on in the video where this brings us out to in a moment. And there we go. Back to the beginning of our stretch where we started. So let's go back to the car. So I tie myself from the, uh, the metal bridge at the very end of our stretch back to the, uh, the lay-by here and it took me 35 minutes. That's using the fast track along the edges of the farmer's fields. That's without any fishing tackle, without any bad back or gammy knee. So that gives you some sense of uh, timing. It'll obviously take you a bit longer if you're laden with tackle to get down to that far end. But uh, a brisk walk 
takes 35 minutes. So I hope you found this video useful anyway, and uh, hopefully you'll get down here and catch a few nice fish. Like I say, it gets uh, much more accessible through winter. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll see you down here because it's one of my favorite stretches too. Thanks for watching. See you on the bank.